Hey guys, and welcome back to Angel Education YouTube channel. In today's video, we're discussing how to tailor your portfolio for different architecture schools in the UK. So if you're considering applying for UK undergrad architecture, keep watching because this will be very useful for you. All right, so uh, today we're joined um, by Grant, who's back in the studio. Hi, Grant. Hi. Hi. Uh, great to have you with us. Mm -hmm. Um, so Grant, um, you know, different architecture schools, you have UCL, you have Cambridge, you have Bath, Manchester, uh, Oxford Brooks, uh, you know, you name it. Um, and my understanding is that all of them, you know, you can't just do one portfolio and apply to all of them with the same portfolio. Is that is that true? Yeah, I mean, they'll all want slightly different things. So on, on the whole, they want, you know, you to follow very similar routes and you to have the same kind of work in there, but you'll want to tweak it a little bit depending on exactly where you're applying. Um, so yeah, your, your personal statement will be going to all of them, but your portfolio gets to have a little bit of ownership on and really make it stand out to the university. Okay, and 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 so, you know, how how can a candidate, you know, determine? Obviously, you know, you've um, you know almost a, a fully qualified architect, but you know, how is someone who doesn't have as much insider knowledge on, you know, what a particular architecture school, you know, will want? How do they determine, you know, what to put in their portfolio? Yeah, I mean, I, I think something to remember is all that information is out there. You know, you have to be really proactive and you have to look for it. But architecture schools will really have their, their culture and what they're interested in online and open days. You know, that's all really accessible information. So if it's something you really want to pursue, um, you know, you're committing to many, many years of studying architecture. So you should be really, you should be feeling passionate about it at this point, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, it's something you can go out there and research. You can kind of get an idea of the, the school's identity and what really makes them, makes them tick, I think. No, great. So, so it kind of come, comes down to, you know, go through YouTube, their YouTube channel, go through their mm -hmm. website, yeah. maybe connect with alumni on LinkedIn and, you know. So, yeah, they're, they're normally quite happy to talk. I've definitely spoken to a lot of people with my time at being at the Bartlett, just people asking, you know, what really what really works at the Bartlett, what they should be putting in their portfolio. And obviously a number of our students as well, who, you know, whom you successfully helped yeah, over yeah. the years. Cool. Um, and what are the things that go into portfolio? So is it, is it, is it, um, you know, I've got zero artistic talent, but, you know, is it kind of like drawing? Is it photography? Is it sculpture? You, you know, how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of everything. It really, um, you're, you're showing what you're interested in, basically. You're showing your identity a little bit. And you're showing your talent, you know, kind of secondary to that. I think you're really trying to get yourself across as a candidate, um, someone that's talented, someone that can really do the work, but you have your own identity. You're mm -hmm. not just doing, you know, something very generic. Um, because you don't study architecture before university, we were kind of talking about this in another video, um, people don't really have an idea of what should be going in there and they think it should be drawings of buildings or 3D work, like digital stuff. And that's really kind of unimportant at this stage. Um, th there's no kind of expectation that you should already be an architect or that you should be really interested in making things that look like buildings. Um, I think the most important thing is kind of, you know, take a really, cast a really wide net and figure out what media is quite exciting to you. So if you do really like drawing or if you really like photography, if you like sculpting, you know, play around with it all and figure out what works best for you and then maybe tailor the portfolio around that because that's kind of your, your visual identity. No, got it, makes sense. And um, Grant, in terms of um, uh, part two, so we, you know, we so far discussed you know, part one architecture um, and uh, you know, there was obviously part two and part three. So do, do you need to do a portfolio for part two architecture in the UK? Yeah, so it's a little bit different. And I think, um, again, depending on where you're going or very hugely. So I did my, my undergrad and my postgrads at the Bartlett, which meant it was kind of an easier process for me going back. I really understood. What they wanted, I could just use my undergraduate work to kind of put it into a 10 page document, send it back to them, and it's kind of a guaranteed way back in. Mm -hmm. um, if you're applying to a different school, you kind of have to go through the motions again a little bit of figuring out what's, what works for them, what part of your work you can really put forward to show yourself as you know, a really good candidate, but someone that can also kind of work in the school's values and, and work to their, yeah. their rhythm. Um, and it will change a little bit. As you go into your postgrad, you generally will go into like a unit based system where you're going to be in a collection of people that have you know, they're like-minded, they'll kind of share a, a visual style or a kind of a focus of your research. And I think, you know, you can really specialise there. So you can be a little bit more deliberate with what you put in and it, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to show that you can do everything. You can just be really specialist in mm -hmm. saying, this is what I do, this is what I'm researching and commit to that. Cool, cool, all makes sense. Well, uh, Grant, look, uh, any, any final tips, um, um, you know, on what prospective students should do when they're tailoring their portfolio to different universities? Yeah, I think I think you just really have to um, you have to be having fun with what you're doing. That really will come across in the portfolio. Um, if you've kind of got to this point, you're applying, you don't have a whole lot of work. I mean, certain schools that won't bother too much. Places like Bath are going to be more 
interesting in your grades and you know your physics and your math the the portfolio is secondary to that place like the Bartlett you really do need to already have a very good idea of I guess your talents your capacity and, and what interests you so uh, a lot of people take a foundation year in between and that can sometimes be really good to to really bulk out a portfolio if you have been lucky enough to do an art and design course at a level or IB then you can really use a lot of that work and just mm -hmm. yeah take the bits of you know really excited you throughout the year and put them in there and really focus on those I think great and so you mentioned a foundation course what's uh, what's that so a foundation year is um, you know you do a foundation degree and that can just be in art and design uh, and that will normally be sandwiched between the the end of your A levels and the start of your undergraduates and that's the year where you can just really focus on everything we talked about basically figuring out what really excites you in the art world your medium you know how you can really come across as an artist um, some places will encourage it some places won't I think Places like the Bartlett that are more portfolio heavy really do like you to have a little bit of time. So mm -hmm. if you haven't really had the chance, like an A level, to explore these things, just having a year where you can really focus on it can be super, super valuable. It's something I did. Um, otherwise, if you do, yeah, if you really know what excites you and you really have a good idea of your capacity, then you can just go straight through. But I think, yeah, you have to figure that one out. Yeah. Depending on, yeah, what you're used to, what you want to do. Yeah, no, it makes a lot mm. of sense. Well, uh, Grant, th this was super useful. Uh, guys, uh, I'm sure you, you, you two find it very useful. Um, so um, I think this uh, ends the video, uh, but uh, just a couple of things, guys, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, it really helps us to, to share this video with a lot more people. And we, uh, we here, you know, myself, Grant, other colleagues put a, a ton of time um, to making these videos as useful uh, and as beneficial to you. Uh, so please, uh, you know, support us. And um, if you are interested in university admissions and in increasing your chances in getting in, I write a newsletter that I send out every two weeks, um, which uh, covers CV building, uh, tips and tricks, anything like that. So do check it out. You can sign up with your email um, via the link below. Uh, but for now, Grant, thank you very much. Thank you. Guys, all the best to you and good luck with your applications. Good luck.